In this video, you're going to be taking a look at CC10 for the Legacy Collection, the Space Pond's appearance from the Volume 2 of the Tartakovsky Clone War series. My personal favorite interpretation of CC10 here, and I imagine it is for many others as well. Uh, if it's not my personal favorite scene from that series, it's definitely in the top few uh, when he lands on that uh, Vengeance cruiser that's going down. And then, of course, uh, it, it's not Captain Fordo, but it's a clone that's in similar armor to him. He says, General Jin, the uh, ship is lost. And then Stacey Tin just says, it's time to get a new one. And then we have those cool scenes of him saying, prepare to board, huh? And then uh, they end up taking over that uh, Separatist cruiser there. So very nice scenes, and I'm glad that uh, Stacey Ten for being such a minor character throughout the prequels, especially in the films, uh, he ended up gaining his spotlight in the original Clone Wars series. In fact, he might have gotten a, more of a spotlight in the Tartakovsky series than he did in the uh, Dave Filoni Clone Wars series. Uh, but it's always nice when uh, a lot of these more background Jedi characters get their own spotlight and we can uh, see them in their prime. And I imagine the scene definitely helped uh, the credibility for Stacey Ten a lot more in the Star Wars community. And it's nice for Hasbro to finally give us an action figure of him. So I did not get this action figure back in 2009 when he was originally released, unfortunately. It was in the blue and white packaging. I do recall seeing him in stores at the time, but it was just one of those action figures where I looked at him on the shelves. And even though I was a fan of... Uh, him in the series it's one of those action figures where I just looked at it and was like yeah you know that's cool and then I put it back on the shelf uh, but then finally around 2018 I found this guy loose at a comic book store I think I paid about $20 for him and he is complete minus his uh, build the droid part but I do have one of the build the droid parts to complete the particular droid that he's affiliated with uh, so I thought $20 is not a bad deal at all, and he's been in my collection for five or six years now at this point. Let's just take a closer look at him. Very nice helmet he has there. Kind of reminiscent of a uh, Mandalorian, actually. It's kind of like a combination of a hoplite helmet and a Mandalorian. Definitely a lot of historical references in the Tartakovsky series. And even in uh, real life, it's not unusual for uh, crews on sinking ships to uh, side the band together and take over an enemy ship, for instance. I think that did happen in World War II a couple times in the Pacific. It is really nice seeing a lot of historical references built into the Star Wars universe. As far as I know, this is entirely new action figure. Uh, the legs here almost look like they're reutilized from a clone trooper, but there is something a little unique about them, especially around the knee pads there. So it might not be reused from a clone. Uh, same with the arms here. Similar to like the uh, General Kenobi that we see in the same series as well. It's like he's using a combination of Jedi robes and clone armor. Or armor of some sorts. I think it's great seeing the Jedi take on this appearance. Shows that they're getting into the war zone instead of just sitting in the council chambers deliberating. So the color of his armor is uh, kind of unique as well. It's like a lighter gray. Can take his helmet off here. She has a very nice portrait of Stacey Ten there. 
I think this is based upon more of his uh, Revenge of the Sith appearance. I think there is a slight difference between... I forget if he's in The Phantom Menace. I'm pretty sure he's in Attack of Clones, at least for a few frames. I think uh, similar to like Eeth Koth and Aiden Kolar and uh, Kit Fisto even, he has a little bit of a different appearance throughout the prequels. There's more of a stern expression here. I think it looks pretty good. Eyes look good. So he does have some wrinkles in his face there. They did a very nice job with the paint job. Not exactly sure what this is on the back of his head. Maybe it's a tattoo or it's just... Uh, Markings that are supposed to be on his head. In terms of his articulation, he does have a ball joint to head, then hinge shoulders, elbows, swivel wrists, uh, swivel waist, then swivel hips, and then hinged knees and hinged ankles. In terms of accessories, uh, pretty light. He just comes with a helmet and a lightsaber. I'm not 100% sure if this is the exact lightsaber that a um, brand new one in the package comes with. I know I've gotten loose action figures before and it has a, a weapon, for instance, that's very similar to the one that they actually come with. Uh, but this is still pretty convincing regardless. Kind of looks like one of the hills that comes with uh, General Grievous. Or perhaps it's uh, meant to be for Stacey Tin there. But regardless, he does have a green lightsaber. And then for his helmet here, uh, the uh, control box with the uh, breathing tubes is all one accessory. And I like how they did it where it can uh, wrap around his horns. Pretty easy to put his helmet on. Easy enough to take off. Uh, for his comma here, it's a little bit restricted because it's plastic, but it's not too bad. You can still get them in most of the action poses that you're going to want them in anyway. Doesn't have a spot on his belt to attach an ungnite hill or anything. But that's alright. Because this Sacy tends uh, more for action anyway. Well, that's pretty much all I can really tell you about this action figure. Oh, we'll mention his uh, Builder Droid part. So this is not the exact one he comes with. But this is the droid that his action figure helps build. Uh, it's an R2 droid, obviously. I think it's like R7T1, I think. Uh, but he comes with the right leg, and I'm pretty sure this is the left leg, yeah. I think I might, I got this from the Ilum Padme, actually. So just to kind of give you an example. I do hope to complete all these builder droids at some point. I do have a lot of spare parts laying around. And we'll do a couple quick comparisons here. I have a character that's somewhat affiliated with his scenes. It's the concept art clone trooper with the jetpack from Revenge of the Sith. Would be nice to get a whole bunch of them and kind of reenact that scene. 
look really good together. And I'll just bring out one more since he's here. Same mold. But yeah, definitely if you need a Jedi General leading your clone troopers, this is definitely one of the top contenders. Especially with that armor. There are lots of other Stacey 10 action figures out there. I do want to get the uh, Saga Legends one from the 30th anniversary at some point. That one's more of a movie accurate Stacey 10. I think that one's just a repaint of the Revenge of Sith one though. Uh, but still I think the color combination on it is a little bit better. But I'll have to see. But I do hope to, like like I said, get a more movie accurate CC10 at some point. But I do think there's a couple other ones as well. There was one in the Power of the Jedi line. And I'm trying to think what else. Saga, the Saga line, I think there may have been one of those statue ones of CC10. And there is one, I'm trying to think. No, there's not one from the Clone Wars animated line, I don't think. Uh, the Dave Filoni one. But still, he has had a large amount of releases for being uh, more of a minor character over the years. But of all the ones, I would say this one's definitely the best interpretation of Stacey 10. So would I recommend this action figure for your collection? I totally would. If you're a big fan of the Tartakovsky Clone Wars, it's a must-have. It's a fantastic action figure. Uh, even if you're just casually interested in Jedi or uh, Stacey 10, for instance... This is a great action figure to have for your collection. And uh, as far as price is concerned, I don't think he's too bad. Of all the Legacy Collection action figures, he's definitely probably more on the cheaper end. You might be able to get a brand new one in the $20 or $30 range if you look in the right places. But even for that price, I would still highly recommend him. Happy he's a part of my collection. But anyways, that concludes this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for plenty more reviews in the future. There will always be more to come. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate all your support. And check out some links in the description if you haven't done so already. Of course, as always, thanks for watching.